The hash slinging slasher. More like the white shoe slaying. We'll see if anybody got that reference, by the way. This guy creeping on her. Good morning, gentlemen, and what a grand morning it is, too. We have just cause for celebration. Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin. A nice showy trial, and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain. Now, the fresh business. Galloway and Phelps, the task is at hand. The address is on the hill. North downtown or Fremont Avenue. All right. Come on, partner. <clears throat> Let's go. Is the new letter genuine? Now, boys, we all know how many imbeciles have confessed in the short case. Ray Pinker will let us know in good time. Coroner says it's going to take at least a week to get an ID. A fine morning indeed. We keep locking them up, but the bodies keep piling up. Yeah, California's love affair, Phelps. As long as the bricks hold up at San Quentin, they're always the killers in this town. Oh, and it's Tim, pouring down rain outside. From sunny California. When's it going to stop? Come on, buddy, let's go. <clears throat> I think this is the first time it's ever been first raining. First a letter, and now another body. Come on, you can't keep on telling me there's not a killer still out there. You know, Phelps, all these arrests on your record are giving you a reputation. You don't want him turning into unsolved. Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows make it the man, Phelps. You can't always hit home run. Sometimes you just gotta make first base. Detectives? Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Scene secure. The rest of the patrolmen are going door to door, canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, detective. This looks awfully familiar. I think that's the impression the boys from the examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. Storm blew in around 10 last night, and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. <clears throat> really? Time of death. From her temperature, maybe 2 a.m. But it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. She's not Blunt stripped down, trauma. though. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt very much he was concerned with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. Really? Don't think this is anything. Well, it's not anything, but, you know, it's her money that's just laying there. driver and our killer are most likely one and the same. Okay, so he tore off out that way. Well, let's go take a look at the body. There appears to be a dry cleaning label. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. Ticket number, F1363, so we can maybe go to the laundry place. <laughs> Nothing with her hand. Let's check her ring finger and see if it's, uh... Huh. This is weird. It's not the same M.O. as the other guys. Or the other girls, I should say.
This isn't what we're looking for. Hmm. What's going on over here? Like, what is all this over here, though? So it's like a homeless person lives here. Doesn't seem like anything's over here, though. I always like to check the uh, the perimeters of things, just in case. You just never know. Alright, well. I guess I'm not on anything over here. I was hoping... Oh, wait. There was something. Just a cigarette pack. Maybe. No. Where's her other shoe at, though? That's the thing. You've got. Oh. Footprints. I didn't see those before. No drag marks. The killer was moving around, surveying the scene. Moving around, surveying the scene. Oh, what's going on here? What's this all about? With all the dramatic music. Detectives, I've been working the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Phelps, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. Did you see anyone around here last night? Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. Awful hobo? Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt. Horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. Okay. Let's see then. Um, oh, they're taking that. All right, well, let's go take this car then. You know the way. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? We've got the hobo camp and the superior laundry. Let's check out the superior... Or superior... Yeah. Superior laundry first. And uh, we'll check out the ticket. Then we'll go check out the hobo camp. Okay, I can't set the destination. Why not? Okay, I guess I'm going to have to drive to the laundry place. Oh, wait, there's a phone over here. We don't have an address to it is why. Probably gonna have to call it in. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services. 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, Detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thanks, ma'am. Perfect. Two birds with one stone. We got the hobo camp location and the services or the laundry services. 
You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? All right, we're going to the superior laundry services. Drive no us there, message. buddy. Excuse me? There was no message. Where? On the Vic. The last bodies had something written on them. This one didn't. I'm failing to follow you. Can't be the same guy as what I'm saying, right? Before you start trying to link this to Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. Understand? Dang, he's getting testy. Henri, old man. Superior Laundry Services, 12.28 p.m. At least the rain stopped. Changed back into the white box now. Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case, and one of your laundry labels came up. F-1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register, and you can take a look. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. You wrote the number down on that dress, is it there? It was uh, F-1363, wasn't it? Right there. This is T. Terrellson, 43 Emerald Street, Westlake. All right, thank you, sir. Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? 43 Emerald Street. Okay, so we're gonna head over here and see what this is about I've before we head over to the hobo camp. To another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic type show a particular disposition for this stuff. Forty-three Emerald Street. Oh, I see somebody sitting in there. Hello? Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Tarleton? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. We're very sorry for your loss. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Terrelson, but we are gonna need you to answer some questions. First, we're gonna take a look around. What for? You don't think this that- This procedure. You see to your girls. Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. What's the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. You got nothing to hide. You wanna hear something funny, Terrelson? Some bums think filling out a missing persons report actually rules them out as a suspect. To check if she was a regular. Baron's Bar.
Hey, look at that. Baron's bar again. Someone must be real sweet on this dive. I wonder why the picture was turned down. Good question, actually. Is this her purse? No good to me. Oh. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps badge twelve forty seven. How can I help, Detective? Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car dispatched. Thank you. All right, so we got some uniforms heading over to that address. <clears throat> In the meantime, let's keep looking. If you'd excuse me, ladies. Seems irrelevant. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Oh, is that her purse now? So she went out without her handbag? She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. At least she was spared that particular indignity. What is he doing back here? Oh, his boots. We can see if Pinker can match the impression of the crime scene. And they're size eights. Lars was out in the rain last night. Mm-hmm. Is there anything on the back porch? It's just some fishing gear. Incidental. That's, I was gonna say, that's kind of irrelevant to anything we're doing. Wasn't sure if there might have been like like any rope or anything out here or something we can use. Aha. That's what I was looking for. Looks like a match with the ligature marks. Mm-hmm. That's what I was looking for. All right, let's head back inside and let's question him. For the record, Mr. Tarleton, what is your wife's name? Teresa. All right. Possible suspects. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. I think you're lying, Lars. I think you were mad at your wife for embarrassing you in front of your friends. I think you came back here and strangled her and then dumped her body on the hill. You think I strangled my wife? How do you expect to prove that? What about the rope that matches? Right there. Your wife was strangled with triple braid rope. The bowline from your boat is a perfect match. Look, I know this looks bad. I'm going to have to come to terms with the fact that I let her go. What about the alibi? You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right. Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. We're going to doubt that. You let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? 
Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. Bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin, and calls me. I go and bring her home. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. <laughs> yeah, look at his eyes. We're gonna doubt that. Spill it, Terrelson. We like the look of you for this, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30. Maybe a little earlier. Your last contact with her. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. I paid the sitter and went to bed. We're going to call a lie on that because of the we got boots and his shirt that's Lying, still dripping. Lars. You didn't come straight home, did you? And how do you figure that? Well, we got the uh, muddy boots and the wet jacket. You were out in the rain. You got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. <sighs> Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. Thanks for answering our question, oh, Mr. Charles. Four out of four. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wife's body. I should have taken her dancing. In my experience, Mac, if you give in to broads, you'll be given into them your entire life. Sounds like the Terrelson broad had her last drink at Baron's Bar. We should check the place out. Appreciate your time, sir. You believe this guy's story? Kind of rings true. We never did go and get go check out the little hobo place, though. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Fine. Where are we headed? Let's go check the hobo camp real quick. I think we ought to investigate the hobo lead. You know, if you think we ought to, I guess we ought to. We never went and checked that one out. I Where's my wife? No more. No one cares about me. We're looking for a tall man with a disfigured face. You know him? Huh? What? I fought in two wars, you know, son. I think I earned some peace and quiet. Ah, the bum isn't here. We should follow the only lead. These guys can wait. No, I think I'm gonna take a look. You see the cop they've been talking about on the radio? Want another accommodation? Isn't it the cop who talked about it? None of these guys have disfigured faces. That guy looks to be okay. Oh, You can't do this. All these guys all seem to be okay. What about this guy right here? Oh, he seems to be okay. This guy seems to be okay. All right, well, I guess we're wasting our time here unless I'm completely missing somebody. But everybody looks to be just fine. All right, well, I guess we barked up the wrong tree here, guys. Let's head back then, I guess. Get 
Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? The book got all blurry again. We're gonna go check out the bar since the hobo camp was a bust. and Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. You know, I rang that husband of hers. The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around uh, 10.30, I think. On foot, in a car, by bus, how was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. I can't decide between the tuna fish and the Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. Okay, so we got an APB on the cab. 3591. Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here. But nothing to fit that description. He's hiding something. The likelihood is that whoever she left here with killed her. Give it up, Benny. All right, two creeps were all over her. Promising to take her dancing. You get a good look at these guys? Sure. I got a good look. One of them was a sailor, in uniform. His cap said, uh, USS Indiana. And the other man? The other guy is Richard Bates. He's sitting in the back right now. Red polo shirt. Really? Any idea where she was headed? Uh, nope. I didn't get that. The husband said she wanted to go dancing. And she always wants to dance when she's been drinking. She was trying to talk some guys into taking her to one of the dance halls. Thank you for your help, Mr. Clough. We'll take it from here. Hey, no problem. Okay, guy in the red polo. This is Bates. That's him. LAPD, don't make me chase you, shitbird. Oh my god, he's running. You can't let the son of a bitch get away. Move, move. Call these grit. Go, Phelps, get after him. Well, I would if. Oh! Come on, come you gotta ride. Go get in and drive. I thought you were gonna leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered? We could have a killer on our hands. I just ran over some people. Hit him, Cole. Spit him out. Don't go to sleep on me. Give me back in close. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the Vic in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. Come on, get a shot on the tire. Hit it. Clean this asshole off the road. I can't even get close to him. Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tires. Ah, I missed. <laughs> I missed. I missed again. Now is not the time to play around, so. Oh, dude, you shot that other car. Oh, we got Let's it. Oh, end this car. All right, all right, you got me. I've had enough. Hands behind your head. That was quite okay. the chase. You're gonna answer some questions. I have a choice in this. <laughs> no, you do not, as a matter of fact. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead, and your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. 
Are we finished? Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay. Drunk. Pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor Boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. <laughs> I like his little stink face. You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Look, I was lying there on the sidewalk. He flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. Nice private chat. I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. All right. We need to, uh, oh, we got the phone over here. Did they ever put an APB out for that cab yet? I think he did, didn't he? I think his name is Phelps. I read Cole about Phelps, him badge 1247. <laughs> How could I help, Detective? Dishwater. I need I'm an APB out on a yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. Were there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, Detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thanks for your help. Central Police Station. All right, let's go. Are you gonna get in the car? Car 11K, we have a response on your APB uh -oh. regarding yellow cab number 3591. The vehicle has been identified at a gas station. Now heading west on 7th Street. Garage on 7th Street. Let's hit it. Uh, the cab driver Mike Titus whole family. I hope you're right. Unit to handle code 3 identified. All right, so, um, let's see, crime location, that's Central Police Station, Barron's Bar, so where is this taxi cab? Exactly, crime scene. So I wonder, let's see, hidden vehicle, uh, street crime, that's the street crime, that's the central, but where is the... Here we go, cab trace, gas station. That's where we need to go. Okay. You see our taxi anywhere? Let's go back this way. Eleven K, yellow cab number three five nine one, sighted in the corner of Wilshire and Whitford. Repeat. Wilshire and Whitmer, 11K. Wilshire and Whitmer. Wilshire and Whitmer. Well, here's Wilshire here. Oh, corner of Wilshire and Whitmer. Yep, that's where we're heading. Right there. Okay. Let's keep going. Where's that cab got you now? Pull over. 
got Sailor Boy offering himself up on a plate back at Central. LAPD, we're investigating well, a what's murder. What's that got to do with me? The fare you picked up from Baron's bar last night. What was the woman wearing? It was a green dress. Oh, don't tell me something's happened to her. Tell me about her. She was with this sailor, and he was all over her. She wasn't having any of it. Said she just wanted to dance. But he had that look in his eye. Where did you drop them off? Is that the Crystal Ballroom. What time? Uh, after midnight. 12.30? Something like that. Thanks. You've been a big help. Well, that's gonna ruin my day. Oh, I'm sorry. This officer needs help. Bank of America, 7th and Olive. Officer needs help. Bank of America, 7th and Olive, a 211 in progress and shots fired. You know to handle code 3, identify. <laughs> All right, so we are going to Crystal Ballroom, though, is where he was talking about. Hmm. He said the Crystal Ballroom is where she was dropped off, though. We don't have an address to a Crystal Ballroom. That's probably why it's not in our book. You can drive. All right, let's head to Central, and then we'll right. get a, an address where to the Crystal headed? Ballroom. We'll get dispatch to give us an address. Hey. He's in an interview too. Thanks. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. Interview two. That's interview one. Interview two. Swipe him in. Put him down with my sap. Interview two. Where the heck is interview two at? Interview two. This way it says. Oh, there he is, right there. Detectives Phelps and Galloway. We know why you're here, Jessup. So it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble, that's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. Let's start at the beginning. You went to Baron's Bar. What time did you arrive? I got a 24 hour pass. I got there around seven. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure, we had a couple of drinks. Mm -hmm. It looks suspicious. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm not proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. Caught a cab to the Crystal Ballroom. Yep. That's where I was going to go. You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. He still looks like he's... Hiding something. He's pointing the finger directly at you, Jessup. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. Where did you go after the Crystal Ballroom? Well, I think the wind had gone out of her sails by then. She caught a cab and I caught a bus back to the base. He's still hiding something. Look at his face. We spoke to the cab driver. Tell us what really happened at the Crystal Ballroom. I'd had enough. She was all upset about her husband bawling about her kids. She, she looked old. Left around closing, maybe 1.30. Got on a bus and she fell asleep on my shoulder. Which bus? An All-American 249. I went past her place. She jumped off, and I stayed on it downtown. After that, I caught another bus to San Pedro. The Indiana's down there. She's being scrapped. And that was the last you saw of Teresa. Yeah, that's right. We didn't say much. I think she was kind of embarrassed. The cab driver said that you were getting pretty familiar with Teresa. That's not how I'd put it. Look at that smirk on his face. 
So the last thing you wanted was her playing hard to get. Did that make you mad, sailor? Yeah, it did. She knew what a guy's looking for, all broads do. Dancing comes second. And what happened at the crystal ballroom? Nothing. Not even a little hand relief. She had another couple of drinks. There was no fun left in her. Just poured her guts out to some bartender. We're holding you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. Can you put the guy in two in a cell and inform the commander? Sure, detective. Got a message for you. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Grand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the bow has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assaults. Thanks. Nice. What now? Drive all the way to San Pedro and check his locker? Let's see if the bus story checks out. There's a depot at 1660 Beverly Boulevard. I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? Oh, let's see. Let's go to the bus depot. Yeah. Yeah, let's go to the bus depot. Why not? Three suspects in the can and one on the hook. And still no hard evidence on any of them. KGPL to car 11K, 11K, come in. 11K, go ahead. Patrolman reporting that Bobby Ross's car game is breaking up at midnight. 11K, roger that. Plenty of time to get downtown, Cole. It's possible. Have them bring him in. KGPL, could we have Lars Carrollson picked up? 11K, roger. Okay, so he's getting picked up, I guess. Okay. Where's the bus driver? Oh my gosh, there's people everywhere in here. Go to the ticket counter. And thank you, ma'am. You have a safe trip now. Where are you boys headed today? LAPD. We're after the driver of All-American 249. Would have been around midnight onwards last night. Uh, just a minute. Frank Zeffirelli. He's your man. Where can we find him? Frank is out on the 7-4. Can you tell us the route? Hang on. Uh, I should have it mapped out here somewhere. That's the guy from the paper who solved that big case. Oh, gosh. I need to run the route. This guy must have escaped from the loony bin. Uh, we're not going to drive the whole thing, are we? Won't take long. We have a siren. You're a real asshole, you know that? Oh, looks like the route is lit up on our map. Oh my god, would you get in the car already? Thank you. All-American 7-4, let's go get him. American 7-4. Uh, this could be a long trip, Cole. Or it could be a short one. And here's me without my hip flask and only a pain in the ass for company. Way to kick off the drive in high spirits, Rusty. Comments like that put me in just the right mood for some leg work. You know what your problem is? You don't like hard work. This kind of rigorous search is what police work is all about. Discipline. Save it, Phelps. You're just as bored as I am. Oh my gosh, I probably like went the wrong way, didn't I? Still 
not seeing this bus anywhere. Still not seeing this bus. I'm still no sign of him. Did you doze off, Rusty? I think you slept through my solving the case. Yeah, yeah, very funny. You just give me a nudge to see him, right? How about you nudge me? I think that's a job for your wife. Oh, Rusty. Oh, there it is. That's the bus we're looking for. Ease in behind her and get her to the side of the road. That's the bus we're looking for. Ease in behind her and get her to the side of the road. There's some kind of problem, buddy? LAPD, we're investigating a murder. You had a sailor and a woman in a green dress on your bus late last night? That's correct. And the woman got off first, around 2 a.m.? Yeah, that's right. And the sailor stayed on all the way to downtown. Can you tell us where you let the woman off? On California Street. To tell you the truth, she looked a little lost, like she got off on the wrong stop or something. I didn't like dropping her off near that hobo camp. You've been a big help, Mr. Zeffirelli. Holy crap! That dude took off quick. So Sailor Boy escaped by the seat of his bell-bottom trousers and left the broad alive. Left her by the hobo camp. Which means he's as good as killed her. We can't eliminate any of them, but the disfigured man should be our starting point. I'm gonna call for some backup. These bows hate cops. Calling all cars. Citizen reports. Officer needs help. Shots fired. Officer down. 6th Street and Lindley Place. 6th Street and Lindley Place. You have to handle code 3. Identify. Alright, we're gonna code 3 to the hobo camp just to kind of get there a little quicker. So that way we don't, uh, drag on this drive any longer than we have to. Everybody clear the way! Back to the hobo camp. He's got a shotgun in his hand now. There's our man. Oh, they're closing the gates LAPD. behind us. We'd like a word with you. Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists. Come to move us on and steal what little we have left. Six rounds won't get us far. We need you to stay for the seven. We need to hold out for the cavalry. How do we do that? Like this. Oh, God. You want your right Your disciples know what you did last we night? We need to fight for it. You like that? How about some of that? Whoa. Joe Lewis. <laughs> oh. Snap. That was awesome. What's your name? Comrade Stalin. Very funny. We'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You. You can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done. You're under arrest, sir. You're going downtown. Kremlin's over here, Phelps. Toss it. See what you find. Okay. He's got a newsletter in here. Oh, we got some rope here with blood on it. Looks familiar. Safe bet it'll match the mark under Teresa Terrelson's chin. That it will. Oh. Ackerman doesn't look like 
much of a dancer. All right, new objective, interrogate Stuart Ackerman. Let's go for it. Doesn't tell me anything. Well, at least he was in the war, like he said. All right, let's go get in the car and let's go interrogate him. I think this should just about wrap it up. You know the way. You can drive. Central Police right. Station. Where are we headed? All right, drive us there, Fenbar. He likes it when you call him Fenbar. The husband has an alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist. He'll be pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has... History, opportunity, hard evidence. What motive? We have the evidence. We know she was here. All we need is a confession and we can charge the bum with murder. Central Police Station, almost 3 p.m. All right, this should be our guy. Let's go interview Stuart Ackerman. Where is he? Yeah, the bum took a swipe at me. We're going this way. Okay, you know where we're going? Lead the way, Fenbar. I gave his wife a tap. I said all fair in love and war. Ackerman, you were in the Marines. How do you know? The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government puts weight like that on a man's shoulders? You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? Why did you kill Mrs. Terrellson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. Are you denying that you strangled Mrs. Terrellson with a length of rope? I'm not denying anything. You have to have proof, lackey. Okay, what about the rope that we found? Where is it? Do we have it here? Boot prints. Here we go, blood-stained rope piece. We found a matching piece of rope in your lean-to. I think we'll find the blood will match, too. I own no property. How could it belong to me? Ouch, he countered that one. A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrellson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. Look at that smirk on his face. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed, but I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. Wow, what a screwball. Where were you around 2 a.m. last night? At the camp. Uh-huh. You were up on the hill. You were seen during the day. We have a witness. We have evidence. Come clean with me, Ackerman. And I'll see what I can do for you. I despise your pity. You have nothing that links me to this woman. You had her purse in your freaking place. Right there. We have you cold, Ackerman. Her purse and the ballroom ticket were in your lean-to. Tell us why you did it. I kill because people need killing. It's what I was trained to do. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrellson. <laughs> I love how he gets into it. Another one behind bars, ladies and gentlemen. A man down on his luck, I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor threes of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And a grand result you have brought me. 
You two are fast becoming my finest crusaders. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. The white... Shoe slaying is complete, guys. No vehicle damage, $50 in injuries, and $188 in city damage. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys for the next case.